quarantining, I guess, man. I guess that's what they say. Yeah. I'm in the hood, quarantine, and ain't nothing changed. Still the same, 150, and then still the same, everything, you know. I got but, you. I mean, I've been doing good, man. I, I mean, I had a good year. I could have week. I got 13, but everybody know I'm the best point guard in that conference. We, hey, 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 hey. We, 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 hey, listen, we never going to argue that. We never going to argue that on the easy right. corner. We already know we it. Dropped, we, dropped, we dropped a couple games towards the end of the season that dropped me to 13, but I really was player of the year before we started dropping the game. Yeah, man, because when you because when you came there, as soon as you started playing, you made an immediate impact, putting up good numbers, good solid numbers. So, man, just talk about, you know, the way that you transfer from one situation and put yourself kind of in like in a better situation for yourself. Just talk about that at SMU. I mean, I mean, I mean, I've been, I, you know, I was the cockiness that spoke that I was the best. Yeah. So when I got to TCU, I felt I was the best, but it didn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I wanted to show I was the best and I didn't feel like TCU believed I was the best. Mm. And so when I got the SMU, I had a chip on my shoulder. I worked hard that summer. That summer I transferred. I was in the gym three times a day with my trainer, Norris Isaac. I was in the gym three times a day. You know, uh, I had all the schools in the country hit me up, but I chose SMU because it was the right fit. Coach Jankovic took care of me. Coach Dunk, all the coaches staff, KT, they took care of me and promised me that we was going to win and they was going to make me work and be the best player I can. But I already knew. Like, I told him before I got there, man, I'm one of the best point guards in the country. Just trust me. And from day one, I showed from the jump. I mean, my first game was at UNLV. Like, I ain't played none of the – we had some small-time games. I ain't even get to play that because my wave. But, I mean, it went good. I mean, I was top ten in the country in assists. Uh, I, like, like I, I'm still not satisfied, though, because I feel like all these guards that they seeing in front of me, I feel like I still got more work to do to show them better. But, I mean, I had a great year just putting guys on notice. I know everybody's going to be talking about me next year, but I've been had this since my of freshman course. year. I feel I, like. Hey, listen, I, hey, if you didn't have it, this interview would have happened because I, I already – I've watched you. So, but the thing yeah. I have – the, 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 the question that I really actually have for you, saying that you didn't get that confidence at TCU, all the time everybody knows that – You've been – your game is predicated on your confidence. So to not have that confidence in a coach for a year because you've been highly touted since, like, middle school. So, like, all your life from when we say middle school to high school to AAU and then you get to a point at TCU and that confidence is not there, how does that make you feel? I mean, I had, I had this one special man at TCU, man, Corey Walker. He kept me like he believed in me. Like this, he kept like even when things wasn't going right at TCU, he like he said he said I know you that like everybody know my game was off swagger. But this summer, like I made my game become more skill and swagger. Uh, you go look on the film and some of the moves I'm hitting, like dang, he couldn't do that two years ago. Like everybody thought I was just this quote unquote just dog that win games. So this no, summer, I, I always from, believed you're a good player. I always felt like. As a guy, like you, you a guy that wants to win, but you also get your teammates involved. I think that you're really highly skilled. But what when you say that you worked out, what did you put on top of the skills that you already had? Man, I added a jump shot. Like I shot, um, I shot like almost sixty percent mid range this year over a hundred attempts. Like uh, I shot thirty two, I think, from the three. Like I shot eighty nine from the free throw. Like. My assistant turnover ratio was, I think, three to one. Like, like I just – I got better at every aspect. Like, I, I, I learned how to – like, I went from scratch one, me and Norris, we stopped from scratch one on how to shoot the ball. Like, I mean, it was days where I was in the gym, like, man, I don't want to do this because it was so hard. But, I mean, like, I didn't really say too much that summer, I mean, because I didn't know if I was going to get eligible. But I knew once I got eligible, they was going to feel me. And, like, Coach Jank, like, he let – he put the ball in my hand and, like, we lost a lot of games we should have won. We was up at, like, every game probably besides two or three, we was up with 30 or a minute to go, and we just end up losing. But, I mean, we got every, supposedly everybody supposed to be coming back. We got a lot of people testing the waters. So, I mean, As next year we're going to – next year if, if I come back, if everybody come back, it's going to be like – it's going to be a movie. But, I mean, I just wanted to show everybody what it was. Like, of it was course, still of one course, team. of course.
Of course. It was still a goon squad. It was still we know. You ready to know the 150? Hey, listen, the 150 movement is always in my heart, dog. Everybody knows the 150 movement is always in my heart. But, like, when – when you as soon as you get to SMU, knowing that the, the the coach is is putting the ball in your hand, like you said, Coach Jenkins putting the ball in your hand, does that give you a new sense of life? Knowing that okay, like you like you said, they gonna feel me. Yeah, yeah, like I had yeah, but like I had great teammates too. Though, like I had uh I had Tyson who was like a knockdown shooter and like wanted me to have the ball in my hand. I had Isaiah Mike who. You know, shot 40 from the three. I had Ferran who was letting me throw him dunk. So I had guys that, you know, the coach could put the ball in your hand, but still you got to play with the players. So I had great players that was like, man, it's like you just like do you and we going we gonna to follow. And I, me and Tyson end up like doing big things. Me, Isaiah, like all the guys on the team, like they were just like cool with it. So like you can't just always say the coach. You got to, you know, give props to the players too because they, you know, as the point guard, the ball in your hand. So. Like, but I knew this like the whole time, man. I was like, I'm the best point guard in the country. I got, I got point, I got other guards. We ain't gonna say names, but I got other guards from top ten teams in the country saying I'm better than they point guards. And, yeah. But I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be real soon before all this coming. Like, you know, the boy at U of H, everybody said was better than me. You know how that goes. Uh, you know? That's where, that's where my next question was gonna go to. Oh, you, you get to go home and play U of University of Houston at least once a year. Knowing that you the, the renewed rivalry since high school with you and Mr. Quentin Grimes, everybody was Quentin was the McDonald's All American, but you held the title as the best point guard in the state of Texas. I I know as I talk to you now, you're not the same guy two years ago. I think two years ago that was a personal matchup. As I talk to you as Kendrick Davis, the young man, I'm looking at as a guy that's giving more more credit to his team. Talk about that though. No, coming back to the age, a place where you grew up and you knew that you that you playing in an arena like this, but now you're playing for S playing for SMU. Was that a factor? Uh, I never took. I never took. I never took the game. Two years ago, I took it personal because I yeah. wanted to be the best in the city. Mm -hmm. But once I got to college, them stars go away. Like nah. five, four stars. <laughs> hey man, they say that away. again. Say that again. I need you to say that again, man. <laughs> the five and the four stars go away, so I never really made it about us because, like, you playing for a university that's worth billions of dollars. So I never really made it about us, but I always had that chip on my shoulder. I'm sure everybody they was wrong about him being number one and me number two. I always had that doubt. Like, even, like, like when we play, I had that circuit on my calendar. Like, I promise you, I'm going to show them I was number one and he was number two. And I feel like, we both played on the Adidas circuit, and I feel like maybe I'm wrong. I feel like they hid him from me. Cause like, explain it. You got you, listen when because the thing about it is, I know you, K, KD. I know that you one of the realest, realest, not just basketball players, but yeah. people. You are gonna tell like it is. So you know when you come to the easy corner, there's no BS. So you gotta explain no. that. Why do you feel that way? Why did you feel that way? Why did you feel? That I way? mean, it's. If we want, if we keeping it, honey, it's showing now who was who was who was supposed to be number one and number two. But I always had that like urgency and cocky by me. Like ain't nobody better than me. Like yeah. you show me they better than me. Like you put me in the gym with them and you show me what they better than me at. Yeah. And you yeah, you might say they bigger, but that don't translate. Like that don't like that don't translate to a win. Translate to you look good, you big. Yeah, like, yeah. But I never like they don't translate to winning. Like and I always feel like. He was six five, like they felt like, oh, he's five eleven. Like we gotta pull up him a little more. But once you get to college, you gotta play basketball. Like you got to play basketball. All that you gotta show you good. And like, this year, all I want to do is just show I was better than him and win. Which they got them one at U of H, but we got us one. But I mean, mm -hmm. overall, you see, his name ain't no no awards in the country. Ain't no no awards in the in the conference. <laughs> So, I mean, it ain't nothing to even speak on. You look at the numbers if you want to. I mean, you can look at the numbers. That's going to tell you the truth. They say numbers don't lie. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. numbers don't. No, 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 no. I, 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 I got you. I got you, man. I got you. But, like. So, I mean, like, I mean, but like here, he's still a good player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's a good player. He's a good player. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I never forgot how the city always tried to pull him. Like, Chad tried to pull him. Like. 
the hey. dude that didn't put in was Kyrie backcourt like they stuck with me and I like I appreciate that but Chad and them tried to pull him out and give him every mixtape and that ain't put out one since he been in college like that's how quick they switch up on you yeah and, and I'm gonna keep it you know we gonna keep it real and talk facts exactly yeah, so like, so so when you say that when you say that like they they tried to the, the pub was that and, and that's kind of you're referring to your last quote those four stars and five stars go away when you get to college man go away when you get to college and the people that turned their back on me when they felt like i was number two they come and trying to come back around now talking about what you're gonna do is you're gonna test the waters you're gonna but where y'all was when i was like you know number two in the city or when i was at tcu like I'm coming off the bench, like I ain't hear from nobody. No, I mean, I, I, like I said, to me, when I saw you play the majority of your TCU games, you play well. But the question I really do have, and another question I have for you is like those doubters, because a lot of people were doubting you that that you you weren't gonna be as well like TCU. Oh, they gonna find out who he is? Because for me, every level that I see you play at, you've won. You've won. You, and, or you won, or you play well. Your your um your sophomore year, that Final Four in state, you played well against the Tascasita. So you know, like all these all these rounds, you know, you played well. So when people have been disrespecting you, because I think the more people was was really concerned about was okay, he can do this in the city. What can he do in the country? Your response is to what? what what's your response to that? No, look now. <laughs> because no, look, I, man, never, I never understood it because I was just like, how are you going to question a man that wins 30 plus games, NBA top 100 camp, played on the Adidas gauntlet? What do you, how do you question that he gets Big 12, but now he's getting criticized? I, I don't know. I, 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 just don't, I just don't know. But Dallas, no, well, the Fort Worth, Dallas area, knowing that, you know, you're there. How have you matured as a young man, not just as a basketball player? Because at the end of the day, the Fifth Ward is what you call home. At the end of the day, there's a lot of great athletes. Speaking of great athletes from Fifth Ward, Xavier Howard from Miami Dolphins. But I look at you as that next guy in line, just, just like representing the Fifth Ward, the bloody nickel, like you call it, that area. Speak on that. Oh, uh, man. Fort Worth was home. They loved me, man. But Dallas is home. Like, the fans of Fort Worth love me, but Dallas is home. Like, Coach Jank and the other coaches, like, all the assistants take time to teach me life skills. Like, it ain't just basketball with Coach Jank. Like, he going to talk to me and keep it real. He know I'm from the hood. He know I'm out the slum. So, he take his time. I talk to me. Like, Fort Worth is good, but they didn't. They knew I was from the hood, but they never, like, they didn't, like, they never took that time out. Like, Coach Jank. Coach Duncan, Coach KT, like them dudes, like Coach King, Corey Barker, like all them dudes, they take time out and talk to me, like about the decisions I make. You know, as a young man, you make a lot of decisions. You're like, oh, what's he yeah, supposed yeah, to? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and like they talk to me, like, and it matured me a lot. Like certain stuff that used to make me mad two years ago and have me rap on Twitter, mm -hmm. don't do that now. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to go on Twitter, he ain't better than me. He did, did, did. Yeah. I ain't got to do that now no more. Like, I just play. Like, and they done – like, everything don't need a response now. Like, that's that, that's the biggest thing I think I grew up at. I mean, like, everybody don't need a response. You know, Coach Lowe – even Coach Lowe still called me. Like, Coach Mingo, you know, who I grew up with from the youngest. Coach Mingo, I still got my whole family support system from the Hawks to Coach Greer at Sam Houston. Like, they talked to me, and I done grew up a whole bunch. Like, I'm still the same, KD, but, like, different mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, they, they, everybody done helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Barreras, how is that relationship still? Like you said, like, 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 how much has he meant to you in this growing process? Because you know, a lot. I know the, that coach he meant a lot to you because at the end of the day, I think he's the one that took the chance on KG. So just talk about that relationship, even though you know you hadn't played for him for, for two years, but I saw that relationship and the trust that he had in you. Talk about man, Coach Rob Barreras, which I think he's one of the top, one of the top two coaches in the city right now of Houston. Talk about that. Is he installed this? It's like everything I got in me, it came from Coach Mingo to Coach Breeze. I mean, 
my freshman year, he brought the tough. Like I always had toughness because where I was from, but he brought that toughness. Like and you, anything is possible. Like me growing up in in the inner city, you think, man, you can't get that. Oh, you can't do that. Like that's for kids that's raised in 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 suburban areas. Like you always think that because Greg's like. He let you know it can be done. Like he told us my freshman year that we lost to, I forgot who we lost to, but they made it to state my freshman year. Lost at the buzzer beater to DJ Hall. It was they lost to DJ Hall at the buzzer. Oh, Clear Lake. Was it Clear Lake? Clear Lake. We yeah. lost to Clear Lake in the in the semifinals. And he told me, he took us to, he took us to the state game and told us we're gonna be there next year. And we was there next year. Yeah. And, and then, we beat the number one. Player in the in there in the country who in the NBA, which is De'Aaron Fox, growing up, you like we're not finna beat him. Like he got five stars. Don't nobody know us. Like we not <laughs> beat him. And he told us like y'all gonna win. We gonna win. Like we like we gonna win on toughness alone. And we did that. And ever since we did that, like he 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 just showed me anything possible. So like I just be trying to ins- encourage the next few boy kids to play basketball and not get caught up. But I mean, he still texts me throughout this day. Like he watch every game and tell me, like, man, I need you to be more aggressive, or I need you to do do this more. I need you to go harder. Like he still texts me and check in on me, call me when I'm in the city. I already seen him while I was in the city, but that's still like a father figure. Can, can I? Um, can you just explain the run that you believe that you had? in the city of Houston because, like I said, there's no one like you, man. Like I said, my first game watching you was 2016 in that Fort Bend tournament against Elkins. And and and, and that's when I was like, who is that busting my boy's ass? Because those are my boys, you know, like, like, like those are my guys. But I said, oh, that's, Kate, that's Kendrick Davis. I said, what great he is? I, uh, sophomore? I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, sophomore's not supposed to be doing that. But you know, just yeah. you know, just for the fans that the viewers that hadn't really got to see you play, because that run was was nothing like it. But just explain, man. Uh, man, I, I honestly, to be honest, I didn't think I could do this. Like, I didn't think I could play basketball. Like, I was, man. Me and my mama was struggling. Like, I didn't. The only reason why I played basketball because my mom was my world and everybody knew that. So anything to make her happy. And she wanted me to play basketball. So when I got good at it, it just became fun to just get better. Like, it just got fun. So, I mean, going into my 10th grade, yeah, I took it serious. I still wasn't working out. It's all about taking it serious. And we got a chance to go to the Fort Bend tournament. Coach, Coach Berez told us, like, their whole – time like she he was telling them there's gonna be the tournament that's gonna make or break you like get your name out there and we got to the championship and we played elk and i was like well, these dudes for real and they brought the best out of me you see you, like, you see dudes. what your boy tyreek doing man like i said man these dudes for real but what they don't know was elk we played elk is my ninth grade year in that tournament the first round and we slept on them and they beat the dog mess out of us, and that was my freshman year, and Tyreek made me fall. <laughs> and, and I, so I, coming I, back. I, ju- I was just with him 20 minutes ago. I was just with him 20 minutes. Before this interview, I was just with him, him and Chad. So I was just with him. Yeah, like, so so my freshman year, mm-hmm. they, like, they, they, he exposed me to high school basketball. He made me fall. And, and after that game, I was like, oh, them dudes for real, bro, like, so my 10th grade year coming, they didn't really throw me off in the championship game. I was like, oh, these these must gonna feel me today. Like I had that mindset, like you gonna feel me today. And, but I, I, mean, but I, have a question, I have a question for you regarding Tyreek. I don't know if you really follow what he's doing and what he's been doing for the SWAC and being SWAC first team. I just want you to deliver a message to him because last year he was actually a preferred walk-on now to – Swag first team. What do you say to that another Houston guy that you know that's comparable to you? Or he you always had shot? I want to tell him congrats though. He want to do everybody know I ain't no friendly dude. I don't really talk to too many people to see. Yeah. But I like I really genuinely I always liked his game anyway. Yeah. Like yeah. I always thought out of the Elkins team, like I always thought he was the best. Not saying they wasn't good, I always thought he was the best. Like his game translated the best. He was small, but I thought he was the best. 
So when I seen him walk on, it threw me off because I texted him and like, you go there? He was like, yeah, I walked on. I was like, walked on? Like, what? <laughs> you got, you belong there. Like, it was not higher. Yeah, so, right. I'm going to get first team this year. That's big. And, man, I'll just tell him congrats and keep working because you get first team now, You whatever, you get you a G League contract, get you to the league or get you an overseas deal, whatever, just congrats and keep going. I mean, you're going to be the underdog any way you go. So he know how to deal with it, though. If he made it this far and got first team, I don't care what conference you in, Division One. Conference on any team is hard, yeah. so that's big, dog. That's big, and they done beat some teams. They done yeah. beat some teams while he been there, and he been a big part of them beating some big teams. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's. Tell, I just want to tell him congrats if he is watching. Man, um, talk to you. Talk about your mom because at the end of the day, every game that we go to, that I went to of yours, she was there. She was there. She was. Yeah. She was there. Even when I felt like the whole crowd was against you. But the thing about it is, one thing I would say is you backed it up. So just talk about y your mom just instilling this confidence and raising the young man that I know that Kendrick Davis is now. Well, it started when we was younger, man. I was wild, and it was just her. So, I mean, it was kind of hard. I, so when she found out that I was going to do something besides the street, she was fully like, I'm with that. Like, and Coach Mingo came gray. I mean, was like, I'm going to make sure he play basketball. So. She just stayed the course. Like, I can't really even say a lot, but just she stayed the course. And, like, she made every game this year. Like, last year she made every game. Like, still, like, she ain't missing a beat. She came when we beat Memphis at Memphis this year. She drove to Memphis to watch the game. That's from Houston. Ooh. Like, like, it, like, yeah, like, I mean, that's Mom Dukes. You know, they know what – they know I'm coming by Mom. Um – I, I have a question because I, I want to test. I, I actually want to touch on this for like the younger viewers. Can you just tell them the importance of loyalty at AAU? Because a lot of these guys are looking like, um, man, I got to go EYBL to get where I want to go or, you know, under armor, even though I know you play for the Godless. But there was a time that it was just the Hawks and you were fine with that. But can you just explain like what what's the message you deliver to younger kids that feel like, I got to go to a certain team or this kind of image to get where I want to get what I want out of college. I mean, I'll tell you, I do see that now. I see a lot of dudes leaving their schools and they AAU teams to go yeah. to – and for, like, I'm not going to – it is a time where if you're on a non-shoe team and you're a shoe team type player, it is a certain time you got to leave and they got to, like, just know the loyalty there. But I stayed with the Hawks until I was ready. Some dudes leave when they're not ready, or some dudes leave when the situation ain't right. Like, I stayed with the Hawks 16 years, and I didn't put on not, another, no other jersey. Like, I never put on the other jersey besides the Houston Hawks. So, I'm learning how to be the man with the Hawks. So, when it's my time to go to the shoe teams, I know what I'm getting myself into. A lot of times, these dudes grow up playing, like, with each other. They'd be five stars, and they don't know how to be the man. Yeah. So I was with the Hawks learning how to be the man, learning like, you know, learning how to learning how this go, beating top players, showing people like you don't need no shoe deal for this. Yeah. And I got my first offer without a shoe deal to the Big Twelve. Like so, like I knew then and now, like I didn't need a shoe deal, or I didn't need to go with other good players to get where I wanted. The reason why I went to Texas Pro was because it wasn't for the schools. It was because I wanted to make a run at the Jordan Grand Games and the in the camps. Like I wanted the camps, and like it wasn't because I wanted offers. Because I could have got the offers with the Houston Hawks. Okay. I wanted the circuit because you can't like you playing against Zion Williamson like on the Adidas circuit you're on your life. Like, but Coach me and Coach Mingo had already knew when the time was right I was leaving, but I was forever a Hawk. Okay. And the Houston Houston Hoops want everybody wanted me, but I went to the right fit. Like. I love the Houston Hoops, but they had so much talent there, mm -hmm. it wasn't gonna let me be me. Like, what, I wasn't gonna be it wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna be but, 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 but I'm surprised that you would say that because Kendrick, you're point guard driven. I look at the hoops point guard, you know, the Javante Smarts, the De'Aaron Foxes. Um, like right now they they have Bryce Griggs, guys like you know, LJ, Tremont, guys like that. 
You don't think that you could be you on the EYDL circuit? No, it, it, no, no, no. At the time, that's why I say the time. Sometimes you got to look at your, your time. Like, they have the great platform. The Houston Hoops got a great platform. They're always going to be the top as of right now in the city. But at the time I was coming up, they had J.J. Chandler, who was a combo guard. Okay. They had uh, R.J. Nimhard, who was a combo guard. They had Jared Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt, who was a point forward. Yeah. They had Billy Preston, who was a point forward. Yeah. Like, that's four dudes that you, you got to, you know, share the ball with. And by them having bigger stars and older than me, how I'm going to showcase what I can do if I got to get a ball to them. I'm not saying I wouldn't have did that, yeah. but I'm saying, like, you got to measure yours. So I go to Texas Pro where I can be the point guard where the offense got to be ran through me. Like, I got to run off his through Jerry. How you going to tell him not to get the ball? He's a, a pro right now. Yeah. Billy Preston was a pro. Like, J.J. Chandler older than me. Like, I still got to, like, so you got to know. You got to, you know, you got to know. And everybody knew. But whoever I went to, I was sticking at because that's where my loyalty was. So when I chose Texas Pro, the last two years, that's where, I, that's where my loyalty was. Man. Um... Wasn't nothing against you, though. I was like, if. If it wasn't that many people that maybe things would have worked different, maybe not. But I just know Coach Lowe believed in me and told me it was going to be me. Man, talk about Lowe, man. Man, Lowe is still, you know, he's still a fixture in this Houston Houston basketball, even though he's not in the coaching game right now or coaching game. I don't know when he's coming back. He always makes a big splash. But just talk about Coach Lowe, man, because to me this is the way I see it. Um I kind of judge coaches a little bit. Like, I feel like when they be going to when, – when kids go to – they the coaches really just get already developed players a little bit. So, like, just explain that because low got you when you were hot. You know what I'm saying? But so, so, so what did he teach you, though? Even though I respect Law as a coach, but to me, sometimes you don't really see what really coaches are really great when you got all these – Four star, five star, big time Division One players. But tell me what Lowe did for you. Man, it's just, what people don't know is Lowe didn't even come after me. I hit Lowe up. Like, Lowe didn't even care that, like, I didn't say care, but he didn't think it was realistic he can get me. I hit Lowe up. So, I mean, like, he got me, but it wasn't like he came after me. I hit Lowe up and, like, I want to play with Texas Pro. He's like, what? Big? Like, you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to play Texas Pro. And that's because I had got the scoop that he produced good guards. Isaiah Taylor, Emmanuel Moody, like, he had these dudes. Zach Brown, like, them guard, good guards. So I'm like, I'm there with you. And I'm one of the next Texas Pro dudes, even though I didn't really – I didn't get to do what I wanted to. With I had an injury, an ankle injury my whole junior year that stopped everything for me. Like, I didn't really even blow up. Like, I couldn't play. I couldn't move. So, I mean, I got a chance to put on Texas Pro jersey. And my brother Robert, my brother Robert played for Texas Pro before he got 40 years, man. I told my father his footsteps to get to college. It just worked out great. Man, and you know. Oh, gotta, got, I got to get you. One of my, my last few questions that I'm going to ask, I need you to give me your top five players of all time right now. Go on, top five players of all time. Top five players, um, top five players right now in the league. And since it's, it, we're kind of going throwback Wednesday in the city of Houston on the top of your head, 2018s, of course, who would you give me four guys that you would have would you would have wanted to run with? Uh, so what I start off with uh, the NBA? Yeah, the top five all time. Top five top all time NBA, I gotta go LeBron, cause he in my age. Okay. MJ. Okay. I gotta go MJ. Uh gotta go Durant. Cause you that you're not gonna see too many Durants. Okay. Uh gotta go Kobe at four. I'm a guard, man, so you making it hard. I ain't got no bigs in there. But like I'm looking at LeBron to play one through five. That's why I'm saying that. Like no, but the thing about it is, I'm not even trying to go by position. Just give me top five players. Oh, okay. Top oh, five players. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Kobe, MJ, LeBron, 
KD and Elijah one. Oh, Elijah you Elijah one. know what? Thank you. Because you're the second person I interviewed somebody else today. They said Elijah one. People really do not be giving Elijah one credit, but he really the best center of all time. He put up banners in my city, so you know how that goes. <laughs> I got you. So, okay, top five players in the game today. Top five in the game today, LeBron, because he's been doing it for so long. Mm -hmm. KD, because he, like, you ain't seeing that every day. Giannis, I mean, he formed MVP. James Harden. Okay. And, uh, and the fifth one, that fifth one got to go to Kawhi. Okay, man, that's the only thing I'd be worried about. People be not putting Kawhi in there, and I'd be like, they, 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 they just see because like, his man. game, his game, ugly. It just get it done. <laughs> like it just get done. Like the job gonna get done. It ain't gonna be the way you like it, but it get done. And um, the the twenty eighteens in the city that you would have loved to run with. Twenty eighteen, man. I don't even. Honestly, I like. My, I wouldn't even care, but like, if I had to pick, I go. Do I count or no? You know what? You count. Yeah. Do I count as one of the five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna let you. So I'm, me, me, I wouldn't want to play with me. Jamal bending me at the two. Uh, man, I forgot who was all in the 2018. Let me get you. Give me get you some names. Of course, Quentin Grimes is there. Of course, you, 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 uh, Miller Cop, PJ Bird. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't want to play me, Jamal Benny, me, Miller Cop, Jacoby Gordon, uh, uh Lady. I play with Lady. Oh, Lady. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Jay. Yeah, Jay. Yeah. Jay. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, Nigel Hawkins too. Like name out the. Uh, no, 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 no. See, like, I was, I wasn't beefed up with Nigel, but, like, I didn't, they beat us, so like, I never wanted to play, like, with him. Like, if you beat me, I ain't want to play no you really talk uh, about those wars, though, before, because I, I like, uh, like, those, I was there the last game you played them. You look like you won state, and then all of a sudden you want to choke against Taylor. I saw, so, so that, that game still pisses me off to this day. Like, so, like. Like, you had one job to do to get back to state. But, like, just talk about those sci-fi wars, dog. It was only for two years. I mean, the wars that I had was Bel Air with Max. That was four years and two times a year. Okay. That that was that was the wars. But, I mean, sci-fi was a war because everybody knew, like, that was going to be the team who get to state. Like, or that was going to be the team. Like, it didn't happen that way, but everybody knew that was the two best teams. Like, and it was a war because – well, honestly, though, I can't sit here a lot. I would say this. 17, I can't sit here a lot of you. I'll look you straight in your face and you my guy. But I really think y'all two ducked Klein Forrest. You better be, everybody better be glad that Klein Forrest was in that Dallas bracket because I don't know if anybody was really beating Klein Forrest that year because it took Marcus Garrett to hold the ball against them to beat them. But I, I'm just saying. Hey, hey. Hey, Mark is my guy, man. Mark, hey, Mark is Gary, my guy, for real. Like, that's my right-hand man, for real. Yeah. Mark is my man. Yeah. Uh, but we would have beat KF, man. We would have beat KF. Like, we had the goal. Like, the thing that killed Oh, no, 17? Had... No, no, no. Yeah, 17? No, honestly, low-key, I'll take that back because I forgot 17, y'all had Jacob. I forgot 17, y'all had Jacob at that time. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that would have been actually interesting. I, yeah, yeah. Honestly, to me, we had the guard. Like, we had the guards now because they, they was guard oriented. Like, wasn't nobody going to out guard us. Like, out guard us, that was not happening. Like, you had to have some big. But that year, we had bigs. Like, the year we lost the South Falls, my sophomore year, going into my junior summer, when I told you I had that ankle injury. No, 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 no. I no, had no. That Y'all, y'all lost to side falls. Y'all, ju your junior year, you beat them your sophomore year, but you lost them. Yeah, we beat them. That's what I'm saying. My junior year, going into my junior summer. Yeah, I got hurt. I got hurt against Bel Air, and I had a torn bone in my ankle. But I played through that, through the through the playoffs. But I was not fully healthy for. But think about it is. I, no, 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 no. I can get that. But the thing about it is, you guys were up that game though. You guys are actually up. 
but but like I couldn't I couldn't sustain like the way we play. You know, we press, and I I was limping the whole game, and I couldn't sustain guarding nobody. In. Yeah. Like they like once I got once my ankle wore, I, it was done. Like I played the first two quarters okay, but once like once my ankle went out, like they we was running, but it wasn't at full strength. Like everybody knew at full because strength. The way I like, break that's my why life. my junior that's why my junior year my summer my junior year my ankle was so messed up from playing in playoffs to where I didn't even have a summer I wanted. Because the the way I see it. Your high school year, the way I I I I I uh I put it like your freshman year, people were were, were still asleep. Your sophomore year, I think it was a wake up. Your junior year, honestly, I think that was your best team. I think your junior year was your that was the best team. It was. It was. We just we just wasn't healthy at the right time. It's always who healthy at the right time. We wasn't healthy. Yeah. Year. It was our best team by far. Like if if I was hundred percent healthy, Wayne was hundred percent healthy. We win. We win state. We just got hurt at the wrong time. But year. I would like, say, but, but I would say your your senior year. But, but I can compare your senior year and your sophomore year teams. But I would say, I think your senior year team was the toughest out of all of like tougher team, like mentally. I was senior your team was built to win a state title. The only thing stopped us was the health. Like we 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 was a team in that run and gun, and we was hurt. And we fought through it. Like, we still battled South Falls to the end. But you see, my senior year, we played them, and we was all healthy with less talent. And one, they had the same talent. Like, we lost Jacob and beat them, but everybody was healthy. But the year that we had more talent, we was hurt. Like, you no, know, I, I never told you this. Through the grapevine, your senior year, some people say, hey, Mr. Weaver didn't play. Oh, yeah, he didn't play. But that's just like taking Jacob out the equation, then. Okay. Uh, I, 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 yeah, but now nah, well, I forgot. Well, it like two out of, listen, two out of the three matchups in the playoffs. I don't know if Weaver played two two losses, but the time he did play. Yeah, he did. But look, check. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, you take away, you take away me being hurt my junior year, okay. and they beat us. You take away me being hurt my junior year, they beat us in double OT, right? They yeah. beat us in double two. Yeah. They biggest lead throughout their game. I remember basketball like crazy. They biggest lead throughout their game ever been four points. Yeah. We was up 20 points on them my senior year. They came back because yeah. a lot of bone calls went both ways, but they came back from a 20 point lead. I would say but, I would say this though about that that game that you won. That's the only game that I've ever seen you get outplayed. By who? Trey Wesley put it on you that game, bro. I'm sorry. Trey Wesley. Yo, we gotta, Trey, we gotta Wesley go the, Trey I, that's the only game. Like, I've never seen you get outplayed. You, you literally, I've never seen you get outplayed. But I was you like. Gotta, you, can't, you can't really say that, though, because they they played a matchup double team on me. Like, it wasn't me guarding him. He guarded me. Okay. Like, they played a, on, on offensively, I didn't guard him. I mean, I didn't guard him offensively the second half. I picked up foul. But he never guarded me throughout the game. The whole game, like, they played a little weird 1-1-3. One, one, well, as soon as I brought up the court, they trapped me, got it out of my hand, then denied the rest. Like, okay. it wasn't no he guarded me, man. I guarded him, man. And he just brought it to me. Like, I didn't guard him, yeah. which was the scout court to guard him, but I ended up getting fouls on some yeah. charges. And he never really guarded me. Like, they went to a 2-3. Like, it's – all you got to do is go look at the film. They went to a, a weird, like – Get it out of his hand, deny him now. Don't let him get it no more. It wasn't no more. You get in front of him, you stop him, and I want you to stop him. It was just like he he had a great game, but like we didn't throw two at him. The, the, like you gotta think though, they got they had like what two, three division one players over there. I'm the only one went division one. You know, you're right. So, you're right. The, the dude you have to blame me for saying that is um is Hatter. Hatter. Because after that game, after Ha, you, you remember Hicks and ha, you know they got the the shop shop host. Um, yeah, Potter? yeah. He said this after that game, and I remember it vividly. He told because he, he, we interviewed um Cy Falls first because they lost y'all came in last. He said he he looked at Trey and said this. He said I can't sit here a lie. Even though y'all lost, you were the best player on the floor today. I mean that was a great great opinion for him, but I know basketball. You can't talk basketball. You got Nigel Hawkins, who's 6'3", 6'4", mm -hmm. 
to help you guard me. Like you got two dudes on me. You got a division one guard guarding me, and you got a division. You got two division one guards on me. One six three, and you another division one guard. I got nothing but five nine, five eight, five seven. You know we small. Yeah. So I mean, of course you better contain me. If I had two division one guards to help me, I promise you it would have been different. Like I didn't have that though. He had Nigel Hawkins, who an athlete and was a premier defender. And you got you like, it like you y'all. But I mean, at the end of the day, what they always said about me, I win games no matter yeah. what. Like I just win games. You can I play me, I'm gonna win that game. Right, and that's what win. I did. I just right. won the game. So one thing, like I said, because did you win uh, thirty plus every year? I only lost ten games my whole four years. Oh God, just ten games. Oh, we okay. lost four. Okay. We lost four. We no, lost four of my freshman year. Yeah. We lost two that year. I went to state. We lost four again. And then we lost, we ended up losing four when we lost in the playoffs. Okay. Before we go, I need you to put this rumor arrest for me because I keep on and imagine. Was the rumor true? How close were you of going to Marshall High School, man? Never. <laughs> because you know there was a time that they were like, Oh, him and John are coming. He's coming, you know, because I think Terrell had just left. And then they were like, oh, yeah, KD coming. So I was just like, hold on, let me get this straight. KD. If, if anything, they coming to me. <laughs> I ain't never joining no ship. Hey, I will never join the ship. They, they coming to Sam Houston. You see? You see how I mean I had to get Jake. Jake to come from St. Paul to say you like they coming to me. I ain't I ain't coming to y'all, man. Y'all coming to me. Like that's just how I, and okay. I'm, 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 I'm that rumor. I, I had to that that's one of the rumors I've been waiting to just put to rest. I was like, bro, well he really went to to, to Marshall because I don't know if you went to Marshall, they probably wouldn't stay. I ain't gonna <laughs> they probably wouldn't because they went to state that year. So like they, they probably win it. So I like I know that oh they winning it for self for so like I said. I said so. Nah, 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 nah. I would not, nah, 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 nah. I'm out, I'm out pit war, man. I got you. I got you. I got you. But, um, you know, I appreciate you coming on the show today, bro. No, any shout outs, bro? Because I already know you're legendary for the shout outs. You had people saying free little Rob, and they didn't even know who he who was. <laughs> so, so, go ahead, man. Give you shout outs because this is your time. Um, you know, we're going to do this again. You know, we're going to do this again. Man, I'm still the same dude, man. No matter if I make it to the league or not, man. I ain't never Hollywood. But you already know, shout out to 150, man. I didn't start that. That's Lil Rob movement, man. Okay. Free Lil Rob. It's still Free Lil Rob. It's Free Lil Paul, man. Yeah. You know, it's still 150. And we're going we're gonna to let this marathon continue, man, to the NBA. Hey, man, the only thing I just need you to do is when you play you a base, make sure my tickets are outside, bro. <laughs> That's the only thing I want, bro. Man, Kevin, Kevin Sampson took care of the whole Sam Houston. When I went to U of H, for me. Yeah, listen, so next time, listen, just hit I, me, I got you. Listen, I'm texting you. I'm texting you when you guys play U of H, all right? All right, I got you. Man, I appreciate that, man. Uh, follow Easy Corner, Easy Corner one on Twitter. Follow on the gram. I'm here with 150, Kendrick Davis. This will be up on YouTube. Holla at me. Appreciate it. All right. All right.